Do you really need that cast iron skillet or that expensive Le Creuset Dutch oven? Are you looking to upgrade your cookware or just don't know where to start? I know it can get pretty overwhelming and sometimes pricey too. In this video, I break it down to the essentials and even throw in some affordable options too. If you're looking for some advice from a chef on which pots and pans you actually need, then keep on watching. What's up universe? It's Julie, your kitchen coach, and welcome back to our channel. And in case you're new here, I'm a trained chef who's passionate about helping beginner cooks gain confidence in the kitchen. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the 10 essential pots and pans you need to start cooking today. This is my OXO Good Grips 12 inch non-stick pan and it's my new fave. I've actually recommended it to my friend who was so tired of her eggs sticking to her pan that I was like, you need to get this pan. And it looks so simple and it's not that pretty. I'm really usually into aesthetically pleasing pans too, but you know what, for this one, you just gotta go for this. This has been holding up for me for months and months through cooking every single day, almost every single meal. And I know a lot of you guys are probably worried about like nonstick coating, like Teflon and all that stuff. If you do the research, you'll see that most companies these days have to go through rigorous standards. You don't have to worry about something coated on here that's dangerous for you to eat that will go into your food. And I've had no problem with any kind of like chipping surfaces or scratches. Just make sure that you use the proper kitchen tools. I have a video, I'll leave it right here for my 10 essential kitchen tools, and I show you which ones I recommend for using for nonstick pans. I would say if you're just gonna stick with one nonstick pan, like this is probably my only reliable nonstick pan that I own, just one, and this is a 12 inch, and I cook everything on here from our morning eggs to pastas to meats. Now there's a lot of companies out there with really expensive nonstick pans, but let me tell you right now, it's not worth it. No matter how good a nonstick pan is, eventually it will wear out. You don't wanna invest in something that's too expensive because if you wanna replace it, then you don't have to feel so bad. This one is pretty lightweight so that you can be very dexterous with it when you're flipping things. It has a nice little rubber handle so it kinda of stays cool to the touch. This has been my trusty, tried and true everyday pan. You can ask Joe because he washes this thing every day. Just be careful that you don't scratch it up and use something too abrasive on it, but you will not regret getting this one. I'm also gonna recommend a universal lid. My recommendation is from Modern Innovations Universal Lid. It fits pans seven to 12 inches. And I don't personally own this, but this is on my like to buy list. It saves space to have just one universal lid. And the bonus is that it actually fits on top of your cast iron skillet too, which I think is great. So it's durable, it's a little bit see-through, so perfect. Speaking of cast iron, yes, the answer is you do need one. This is my Lodge Logic 12 inch seasoned cast iron skillet. Sometimes you'll see it sold alone and other times you'll see this guy. This is the silicone handle. This one happens to come from Lodge Logic, but you just place it onto the handle and you do not put this in the oven. It's not that heat proof, but it does protect you when you're on the stove and you go to grab it because a cast iron skillet is exactly what it is. It's entirely made out of cast iron. It's one piece and it conducts heat so well and holds it and retains it for so long, which is why I think every beginner cook needs it. And also the silicone handle helps you that when you do place this right on the table for serving, it protects your guests so that they know that not to burn themselves on this. There are different sizes of cast iron skillets. I'd say the most popular ones are the 10 inch and the 12 inch. I opted to get the 12 inch because I just started out with one. Eventually, I think I will get a 10 inch too because a lot of recipes require specific sizes of cast iron. If you don't have any other pans that I recommend going forward at this point and you just own your nonstick and a cast iron skillet, you can rock the kitchen with any recipe. And the more you use it, the more nonstick it becomes. You can even cook eggs on this thing. I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, do I really need this because it seems very daunting to clean? Don't worry, I got you covered because that's in an upcoming video too. You'll see me use this baby in multiple recipes from my skillet apple crisp, cast iron pizza, skillet nachos, 
and even bulgogi. It's versatile and very affordable for all that it does. It can last you forever and pass it down to generations as long as you take good care of it. And even if you ruin it, you can bring it back to life. So it's kind of like this indestructible pan. Without a doubt, you need rimmed baking sheets and wire cooling racks. These two go hand in hand. As you can see, they nestle inside each other. This wired cooling rack can sometimes be called like a cookie rack or a cooling rack that you just use when you put your baked goods on top but you can use it for cooking as well. You just place your food on top and then it raises it above so that there's some even cooking and air distribution and air circulation going around it and underneath. So it helps things to stay crisp and not soggy and to brown evenly. It also helps to catch drips, like if something's particularly greasy, like you can cook bacon on here too. So these go hand in hand. This is called a half sheet rimmed baking pan and so in the restaurant industry they call it like a half sheet pan but that's because it there's a full size that's like double the size but they only fit into like larger ovens like commercial kitchens so this is good for home use and the brand that i'm recommending is nordic wear because these are not created equal some could be cheaper but they will be cheaper meaning that they'll warp in the oven when they go in the oven they'll kind of like buckle and bend and then they don't really come back you'll use this pretty much every day or at least a few times a week once you get this this is a wire cooling rack that I just happen to have and you can see the legs fold out and so I usually use it for resting my banana bread or my pastries and cookies but I double it up as my cooking rack with the legs folded. But the one that I'm recommending has great reviews and it performs really well and they fit perfectly inside like the Nordic Wear half sheet pans. And they also hold up to very high temperatures which is important so that they also don't warp or get destroyed in the oven. These two guys together are probably your most versatile cookware. You can use it for cooling, glazing, catching drips, spreading, oven frying, and roasting. It just goes on and on. And you know what? I've been very intrigued by recipes I see out there where they use these half sheet pans to do a full dinner. So if you want to see some recipes with like half sheet one pan dinners, let me know in the comments below. A stainless steel fry pan with lid. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, this lid didn't come with this fry pan. I stole this from another guy, but it fits perfectly. And the one I'm recommending does come with a lid. You know me by now, I don't usually like to recommend unnecessarily expensive things, but this one I'm gonna recommend all clad. I figured if you're just gonna have one good trusty stainless steel pan, just go for the big bucks and just get the one that you need that will perform really well and hold up. And it is a little beat up because I've actually used this in professional settings. In fact, the reason I have this is because I earned this as a gift from a professional setting. I used to be a food stylist in New York City and oftentimes after events or gigs that you do, they'll just give away some of their tools and equipment that they don't need. So that's where I inherited this guy. So you just saute and sear your steaks, your roast, your chicken, your pork chop or whatever on here and make sure that it develops a crusty fond. So you'll notice that when you first start cooking with this, you'll be like, oh my gosh, my food's sticking to it. You know why? Because it's not ready to flip yet. That's right, you gotta let it go for a little longer. And when it's ready to release, it will release. So as much as I love my non-stick pan, I will use this instead whenever I really wanna get that nice, kind of like brown crusty bit. That doesn't sound good, but. <laughs> why I recommend all clad is because for the best conduction of even heat, the materials have to be clad, meaning that the pan is made of three or four metal layers and there's no separate disc for the bottom. It's all one piece. That's why all clad is called all clad. You get it? And because it's made out of metal, including the handle, it is safe to put in the oven. So it works just like a cast iron where you can go from stovetop to oven or under the broiler. The flared shallow sides encourage rapid evaporation of moisture. So that's how you get that even sear and quickly. And also you can make a pan sauce with the fond or the brown bits that get stuck by deglazing it. If you're enjoying this video so far and getting some value out of it, give this video a thumbs up. A straight sided saute pan. Despite its name, these L-shaped high sides prevent it from searing really well. So what you really wanna use this for is more like braising, shallow frying, tossing big amounts of pasta, things like that. You'll notice that this is used for a lot of one pot recipes because it does have the ability to kind of like quickly saute or brown and then you add a liquid or the vegetables 
you cover it with the lid, you simmer it slowly, or you throw it in the oven and you slow braise it. That's what this is for. Now, if you wanna go bougie, you can definitely get the all clad, and I could recommend the all clad stainless three quart tri-ply saute pan. That does come with a hefty price tag. For this one in particular, because you're not trying to sear, I would go for this one, which is what I have, the Cuisinart Multi-Clad Pro Stainless Three and a Half Quart Saute Pan with cover. I have to be real with you, and I also got this from a food styling job. Yeah, isn't that cool that you get perks like that as a food stylist? What you wanna look for is that the pan should be pretty heavy bottom, and it is. This is kinda hard to hold. But then again, it's not so bulky, so it's hard to maneuver. And ideally, there should be some kind of helper loop and that's what this guy is over here so that it can help you pick it up from the oven in and out easily. Lid should be weighty and oven safe and fit tightly to create that seal and to prevent the steam from escaping. You definitely want to use this when you have a recipe that requires braising, but it also requires browning before. You need a good saucepan. And I'm going to make a disclaimer right here. The saucepans I'm recommending I don't even own. All right, okay, let me explain. I'm slowly upgrading my kitchen tools and equipment piece by piece. So the saucepan that I'm gonna recommend is the all clad stainless four quart saucepan with lid or the Best Buy version, the Cuisinart multi-clad unlimited four quart saucepan. I've had these like passed down from my mom when we moved. This is not even a four quart, this is a three quart. It has a nice little broken chip on the lid, but I am gonna try to upgrade to that. If not the all clad, then at least the Cuisinart. For reference, this is what holds four quarts. A traditional three to four quart saucepan has tall sides, which reduces the rapid moisture loss, and that's what you're looking for. So you want that particular shape. This is exactly what you want when steaming, blanching, or making sauce and soup. You can also use it for baking, like when you're whipping up pastry cream or lemon curd. What you're looking for is that the walls are as thick as the bottom, which is why I recommend the all clad because of my explanation before. You just kind of want it all one piece so that it conducts the heat evenly and well. I would also like to recommend a two quart size. The one I'm recommending is the Calphalon Contemporary Nonstick Two and a Half Quart Shallow Saucepan with Cover. That's a mouthful. So this is the only thing that I have that's kind of like comparable. This is nothing near the size that I'm saying that we need. This barely holds probably two cups. I'm recommending the one that holds two quarts. So it'll be like half the size of the first one. And you want it to be nonstick so that it can be your everyday pot. Cause it'll be good for reheating leftovers, heating up soups and cooking up foods that easily stick. Like if I wanted to heat up some mashed potatoes or some corn chowder or something sticky and thick like that, then you definitely want a nonstick. So consider that to be your everyday pot. I'm also recommending a large stock pot. The one I'm recommending, once again, I do not have, but I'm on my way to getting an upgrade. It's either the all clad stainless 12 quart stock pot or the Cuisinart Chef's Classic Stainless 12 quart stock pot if you want something a little bit more affordable. Knowing me, I'll probably go for the more affordable options for all of these, but like, with a stock pot, for instance, with that really large size, this is like a 12 quart capacity. So like if you're gonna have just that one big pot, make sure it's a really big, trusty, good pot. To give you some frame of reference, this is a six quart pot. So imagine this baby butt doubled. So when I have to make large things of soup or chili or need more than this, I just use two pots, which is not very helpful. So definitely I need to upgrade. And there are moments, especially as you start cooking more, where you're gonna wanna cook in a large pot, especially when making stocks. Like for instance, after your turkey dinner, if you wanna make turkey soup out of the carcass, that's the kind of pot that you would use. It also holds enough water to boil up to two pounds of pasta. So if you ever need to make pasta for a crowd, then you don't have to do it in batches. You don't want the material of the pot to be too thin and you want the handles to be hefty enough to hold up to all of that lifting, especially it's gonna be really heavy carrying that around. And instead of wide pots, you wanna look for tall, narrow pots. And you're also looking for pots with a thick bottom because there are gonna be moments where your food will tend to scorch or stick. If it's too thin, it'll burn faster. So it's kind of funny that I'm telling you to get it when I don't even have it, but I'm telling you this because that would make my life a whole lot easier. 
you need a roasting pan. I have a sad excuse for one. <laughs> Truth be told, I got this one from Ikea. It was because I had to cook the turkey dinner. I didn't have one, I was in a pinch, so I bought it. So it's been holding up okay. Although the one that I'm recommending is sturdy with a lot of great reviews. One that I'll probably upgrade to is the Kelfalon Contemporary Stainless Roasting Pan with Rack. And a less expensive one that also has a non-stick surface for easier cleaning is the Calphalon Commercial Hard Anodized Roasting Pan with Non-Stick Rack. Both options are sturdy and practical and obviously it's great for roasting turkeys or large roasts and cuts of meat. In a good roasting pan, the sides are low enough to allow the meat to brown, like it's not gonna cover it, but it's still high enough to catch all the good juices that comes out of it. A roasting pan's large size allows you to roast both your meat and your vegetables at the same time and eventually make a pan sauce or gravy. And a good one can transfer from oven to stovetop if you wanna make your pan sauce right into the pan. Did you know for a roasting pan, you can also remove the rack and use the pan itself for big batches of lasagna or casseroles too. So it's kind of versatile. You don't have to wait till Thanksgiving where you use it once a year. To prevent scorching and warping, look for one that has a heavy bottom also. And when it comes to roasting pans, bigger is better, but just make sure that it fits in your oven. You need a Dutch oven. Yes, you do, my friends. It's that time to talk about this baby, my Le Creuset. Man, I use this thing all the time. What I recommend as your one Le Creuset pot is the Le Creuset seven and a quarter quart round Dutch oven. Mine is only five quart and it's still big and it still holds up to the task. But if I had a choice, I would go a little bit larger because sometimes I just have larger things that I wanna cook in here. But this size is still good too. Now, if you do your research and you're wondering, why is it so expensive? Why do I really need it? Is it all the rage? And I know, especially during shelter in place, a lot of people who are baking breads inside Dutch ovens and things like that. But besides that, why Le Creuset is just like stands above the rest is because it's so heavy, reliable with a tight fitting lid. Like nothing escaping out of this. So you trap in all that goodness and all of that moisture. So I usually cook things from stovetop and then throw it into the oven and then braise it for a really long time. So I do this for like beef bourguignon, like beef stew, casseroles, roasts. You can do whole chickens. I also recommend a Cuisinart seven quart round covered casserole and a Lodge six quart enameled Dutch oven. Both are way less expensive, but also have good reviews. What you're basically looking for are looped handles tight fitting lid that's oven safe, including the handle, heavy bottom, not too light and not too, too heavy, and then a light interior that's enameled cast iron. So it helps things not to stick as easily and also it's easier to clean. With enameled cast iron, you just clean it like a regular pot. With the lid off, it's perfect for browning, steaming, blanching, and deep frying. I usually use this the most for deep frying because it has the heavy bottom and it just retains the heat really well. And I don't have to worry about it. I use it for my Korean fried chicken, toasted ravioli, use it for my spring carbonara. I don't know, I could probably list like way more recipes than you have time to listen for because I use this thing all the time. It's much more of an everyday pot than you would assume, especially if you have a larger family and you like to cook things like soups and stews. And because I could use it for so many styles of cooking, it's the, one of my most versatile pots that I own. And lastly, I'm gonna recommend my grill pan. This is one from Le Creuset also, and I like this one too. But the one that I'm gonna recommend with high reviews is the Lodge Square Grill Pan and the Ribbed Panini Press so that you can really use it to make paninis or weigh down chicken or different things like that to get those great even grill marks. This is meant to be used on the stovetop and the grates are similar to the grates that you would find on a grill. This is a cute little size and I find that it's practical, but you can also upgrade and get a grill pan. I use this one a lot too and this one is super heavy. It's made out of cast iron and the bonus is that when you flip it over, there is also a griddle side so you can use that as like a flat griddle like as if you were cooking in a restaurant or a diner you could roast vegetables on it so i just stretch it over two burners and i use it like that because it's cast iron you do have to take care of it better so mine's a little crusty but i tried my best um and then you have to kind of season it and oil it like you would with a cast iron pan 
Taller ridges means that the food stays perched on top while the fat is allowed to render and drip away. Like I said, I'm fine with my Le Creuset. It's been holding up pretty well, but the reason I recommend the Lodge is because of the price point and the panini press, which makes it perfect for grilled chicken, sandwiches, and bacon. If you noticed in this video and in my previous ones, I haven't really touched base on baking equipment and bakeware, but don't fret my pet because that will be coming up next. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that one. Let me know in the comments if you found this list helpful and if you own any of these pots and pans yourself. And make sure you go back and watch my 10 essential kitchen tools and other tools to help you step up your cooking game as well as my knife guide. I have this whole series of beginner cooks essentials in the works, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.